Hi, this is Teacher Jennifer from U.S. Citizenship Podcast. Today we're going to talk about three important news items. The first one is is the naturalization test redesign. The second one is the the potential government shutdown. And the third one is a citizenship interview that celebrated Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. Some of these posts were originally posted on links.ed.gov, Civics Education and Citizenship Group. They reflect my opinion and do not reflect the opinions of the Department of Education. Let's get started. On Wednesday, July 19, 2023, the CIS Ombudsman conducted an online engagement with the U.S. CIS Office of Citizenship. The purpose of the engagement was to address concerns related to the 2022 naturalization redesign. USCIS proposed to create a fair and transparent speaking test and to update the civics test. The current speaking test is based on the USCIS Form N-400 application of naturalization, revised in 2014 and 2016 to incorporate questions mandated by national security legislation. These questions include difficult vocabulary for English language learners. The vocabulary, plus the seemingly arbitrary selection and phrasing of Form N-400 Part 12 Moral Character Questions, led to ongoing concerns to the fairness of the speaking test. In addition, there were repeated calls to revise the civics test for clarity and inclusivity. Let's talk about some test preparation from December 22nd to July 23rd. To address these concerns, on December 15, 2022, USCIS posted a notice in the Federal Public Register that they were piling standardized testing formats. To demonstrate their understanding of English language, applicants would orally respond to images of daily life. To demonstrate their understanding of American civics, applicants would respond to a multiple-choice civics test. The ability to understand and speak everyday English and basic knowledge of basic American history and government is seen critical to successful immigrant integration. In addition, USCIS hosted national engagement webinars on January 12th, March 3rd, April 28th, May 31st, and info webinars for community-based organizations or CBOs that had volunteered to participate in the pilot. Additionally, USCIS created a dedicated test page posting PDFs of their engagement slide decks and summaries of the submitted questions. During the webinars, an example of an image-based speaking prompt, tell me about the picture, and two prompts were shown, a woman and girl cooking, and later, an adult and child brushing their teeth. Test takers must describe the picture using appropriate words and phrases. Applicants would be not graded on grammar usage. Several multiple choice civics questions were also shared. Only one possible correct answer and three distractors. There were also discussions about the schedule So the proposed schedule was originally from July to September for community-based organization trial test and the composition of the technical assistance. The contract later was awarded to TESOL. In June, the TESOL tag met in two groups. The speaking trial group composed of adult literacy educators and English assessment experts focused on the speaking test image prompts and the rubrics targeting the NRS Level 3, which is higher level ESL. The civics group, which included adult civics educators and historians, reviewed the civics questions to include new content and revised the 2008 civics questions to allow for only one correct answer and two, not three, but two distractors. On July 7th, 
USCIS had a webinar for the community-based organized trial test volunteers about the test administration, rephrasing image prompts, and the civics test. So there would be three answer choices. One was correct, and then two distractors, not four. In addition, test procedures and instruction materials would be developed and delivered soon. On a personal note, I and many of my community-based organization volunteers were very relieved by the slight delay because our programs reopened in August. So now we come to the July 19th Ombudsman Engagement. During the July 19th Ombudsman Engagement, information vetted by the TAG was shared in detail during the July 7th Community-Based Volunteer Webinar, was carefully reviewed by the Office of Citizenship Education Specialist in response to questions from the CIS Ombudsman Analyst, Particular concerns included reduction of real and perceived barriers to naturalization. USCIS responded that disability accommodations and waivers would be issued. Uh, The ombudsman raised concerns about maintenance of the 94% pass rate of the first-time applicants. USCIS said that they would track and analyze trial data and compare it to current and historical data. The ombudsman asked about the adoption of best practices and test design. USCIS responded that they needed to collect the data first and then make a decision. Ombudsman asked about the transition from the current N-400 speaking test. USCIS responded that it wanted to refocus on ordinary English to facilitate immigrant integration into the community at large. The Ombudsman asked about the selection of the TAG members. USCA responded that it publicly solicited TAG members via TESOL.org. It said that confidentially needed to be maintained during the trial to facilitate independent analysis and data integrity. And finally, the ombudsman uh, questioned the the diversity of the community-based organization. USCIS responded that 231 community-based organizations from 38 states had volunteered. USCIS was planning to provide instructional resources and tip sheets, train test administrators, the community-based organizations, on their part, would recruit test takers, instruct, and administer the test. During the meeting, the questions and answers were asked and answered clearly and concisely to the seemingly satisfaction of both parties. Because of the focused nature of this engagement, the public could only observe and not comment. There were repeated invitations to contact the CIS Ombudsman or the USCIS Redesign Test Team. It was noted during these Ombudsman engagement that multiple choice test civics tests are a common part of the naturalization process for many countries, yet a speaking test may or may not be part of the eligibility requirement to become a citizen of those countries. Compare and contrast naturalization interviews from different countries. Wow, that would be really fascinating. USCIS said that there would only be one naturalization speaking test, either the current N-400-based speaking test or the image-based speaking test, if the redesign was approved. A further note about the the image-based speaking test. The prompt would be, tell me about this picture. A person with limited literacy would simply have to basically identify who is in the picture, what's in the picture, where is this taking place. Fairly standard questions within the ability of most basic speakers or learners of English. The CIS Ombudsman posted the 719 presentation follow-up questions, answers, and further materials to their CIS Ombudsman public engagement page. That material was posted in mid-September 2020.
2023. The USCIS webpage also included a link to the video of the engagement. So make sure you check that out to see what exactly happened during the engagement. I would like to continue. September 23rd and beyond, the community-based organization and field office test trials. So the trial tests were supposed to start late July, early August. As previously stated, 230 CBOs in 38 states had volunteered for the trials, providing a wide range of literacy, abilities, ethnicities, ages, and economic statuses. As ESL and citizenship programs, instruction incorporating the test redesign items would begin. Student volunteers would be recruited and participate in those trial tests. The CBO trial test would have no effect on the N-400 filed by the trial participants. Non-identifiable information would be collected, such as NRS levels or literacy levels, ages, and gender. The speaking trial test would be administered securely via the Internet on computers or tablets, which could record audio responses. The civics trial test would be securely delivered over the internet as a 10-question multiple-choice test. There would be no paper test. So, as of September 24, 2023, the community-based organizations have not received these materials. What we do have is an invitation to attend the National Immigration and Integration Citizenship Education Conference. This will be held October the 17th to October the 18th in Washington, D.C. This will be held in partnership with the White House Task Force on New Americans and the Interagency Naturalization Working Group, which is bringing together professionals with uh, equities and in immigrant integration and citizenship and education for both public and private sectors. The conference is free. However, we are responsible for transportation and lodging. We are invited to sign up on their website, and there are uh, virtual and in-person attendance options available. I will be attending, and of course, I will report from that uh, conference. I would like to continue and review very quickly what was posted in mid-September uh, by USCIS and DHS. In mid-September, they were able to post their PowerPoint presentation, the readout from the engagement, and USCIS did post an unlisted video, the link of which is available on USCIS, and I'm including that link in our show notes. Further information can be tracked on USCIS Naturalization Test Redesign Development page, the DHS Office of Citizenship and Immigration Services Ombudsman's page. Further developments. Responding to this was Voice of America, which is an initiative by the U.S. State Department. They posted a story on September 19th, Citizenship test changes might require better English skills. Here's a quote from that uh, article. Possible changes to the naturalization interview would make civics questions, questions multiple choice to reflect current best practices and test design, USCIS said in a document explaining the update to the test. However, a teacher said that it would make the test harder for immigrants who may not have a great understanding of American history or English. You can read the article, which in includes the audio of the article, and a quiz to test your student's understanding. You can also watch a subtitle video of this article on VOA Learning English podcast for Wednesday, September 20th, 2023. The citizenship story starts at minute 1108. It's appropriate for intermediate ESL adult learners. I watched it with my citizenship students. We carefully went through the video and we stopped the video to discuss what was happening. 
I would like to continue on and just talk very quickly about other resources for VOA, but I'm going to leave that for a little bit later in the podcast. On September the 20th, 2023, ILRC, the Immigrant Legal Resource Center, hosted a webinar with Bill Bliss, a great citizenship teacher. We all love him, the author of Voices of Freedom. ILRC attorneys and guest speaker Bill Bliss gave an overview of the USCIS naturalization test redesign announced in December 2022. Educators of low literacy adults believe that these changes would make the test significantly more uh, difficult for applicants. And the great thing about this, this webinar was that ILRC staff actually talked about the laws, the federal regulations associated with what needs to be in the naturalization test. And Bill Bliss talked about in detail the data and the literacy levels about the test. This is a free webinar, so you can go to ILRC, click the 920 USCIS naturalization test redesign, create an account, check out, you don't have to pay anything, and then you go to your account to view the recording. Note, the webinar resources include slides, and especially when you take a look at the slide deck, Slide 31 has register for comments for email addresses, which are really important. ILRC provides a chapter from their naturalization and U.S. citizenship manual, which is thick, 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 but very important chapter, English and U.S. history government tests, which is really great, and recent articles by Bill Bliss. You can also read a transcript of Bill Bliss's interview Uh, Look for the article 922 USCIS Naturalization Test Redesign, Flaws in Design and Transparency. All the links will be provided in my show notes. Again, there's a lot of discussion in the citizenship community about the impending changes to the, the test. A lot of people are doing analysis, but there's a lot of speculation In order to bridge these gaps and to get everybody on the same page, try to attend the National Immigrant Integration and Citizenship Education Conference. You can attend uh, virtually or in person, and all the links are available in this podcast. I personally am really hoping that the, the trial tests move forward. Why do I say that? It's because we really don't know what the success of the test would be unless we get some good data from this. So I really recommend that community-based organizations plan carefully, fully prepare their test takers, and participate in good faith in the, the pilot program. And also the upcoming conferences and all the discussions leading to the conference, because good data leads to better decisions. The next item that I would like to discuss is the possible U.S. government shutdown. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. The best place for you and your students to follow the news is go to voanews.com. Click U.S. News, and then you can follow what's happening in the United States. When you're at the U.S. News site, you can also click what's happening under U.S. immigration and Native America. U.S. immigration provides weekly roundups of news and news of particular interest if you're following what's happening with temporary statuses. While you're at the VOA News website, go up to the top right-hand side. You're going to see three icons. You see audio, you see the camera for video, and then you see something that looks like a book, a small book, which is an icon for languages. If you click the languages, you're going to see all the VOA websites. They host news websites from many, many different countries and different languages. The one I would like you to take a look at is On the left-hand side, under English Worldwide, is English, which is voanews.com, 
and learning English. Take a look at learning English and there you're going to find more resources for your English language learners and they also have information there about U.S. history. They have news in there about what's happening with the government. You can also follow VOA and VOA Learning English on YouTube. This is a call to action. It might have this potential government shutdown. This is going to affect not only the people who are waiting for their citizenship interviews, but also for the asylees and the refugees who are waiting for their interviews to get into the United States. So in order to basically support these people and all the workers and all the people who are helping make the immigration system run, please contact your representatives. Basically say, I support full funding for USCIS. I support full funding for immigration legislation. I support full funding for adult education. I support full funding for literacy. Please take this opportunity and flex your muscles and express your opinion. How do you do that? Well, you can go to house.gov. Upper right-hand corner, you can enter your zip code to look up your representative. Sometimes you have to put in your addresses to figure out, do I belong to this congressman or that congressman? For the Senate, go to Senate.gov, go to the upper left-hand side. You're going to look for the button that says Find Your Senators. Click by state and you can see your senators. Click your senator's website and send them a message via their contact information about the legislation or the issues that you're the most concerned about. I also have a video about this that I made a couple of years ago that says, who are my U.S. senators and representatives? I'll link that up in the show notes. The final thing that I would like to talk about was uh, this past week was uh, not only was it National Constitution and Citizenship Day, but it was also National Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. And so what we did in our school, not only did we have a, a great celebration that featured cake and students coming together, uh, we also um, included our administrations for our local school district. We did learning about the Constitution. And most importantly, we tried to link up the Constitution with the laws that we experience day to day as people who live in the United States. One of the most important things is the law that governs adult education and family literacy, which is known by the initials A. E-F-L-A, which is the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act. So I put together a citizenship interview that basically matches up information about adult education, the legal code, and how it links up with the Constitution. Let's get started. The current First Lady is a lifelong English and writing instructor currently teaching in Northern Virginia Community College. Her dedication to her students while juggling family and social obligations is the shared reality of many teachers and students, particularly in adult education. Question, what is the name of the President of the United States now? Question two. The Office of Career, Technical, and Adult Education, OCTE, is part of the U.S. Department of Education. OCTE administers policies and programs related to adult education, vocational education, and community colleges. Question. What are two cabinet-level positions? Question three. The Workforce and Innovation Opportunity Act of 2014, WIOA, is the primary U.S. workforce development law. Question, who makes federal laws? Question four, 
WIOA authorizes the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act to coordinate federal and state programs. Question. Under our Constitution, some powers belong to the states. What is one power of the states? Question 5. Under the Code of Federal Regulations, the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act supports programs that help adults get basic skills they need, including math, literacy, and problem solving, to be productive workers, family members, and citizens. Question What is one promise you make when you become a United States citizen? Question 6, 7, and 8. The National Adult Education and Family Literacy Week started in 2009 when the National Coalition for Literacy worked with then Congressman Polis, Democrat Colorado, then Senator Alexander, Republican Tennessee, and then Senator Murray. Democrat Washington to celebrate adult education and family literacy. Question six, who is one of your state U.S. Senators now? Question seven, name your U.S. Representative. Question eight, who are the two major political parties in the United States? Question 9. During National Adult Education and Family Literacy Week, the Coalition for Adult Education, COEB, coordinates a packed schedule of activities. Adult students and staff use social media and visit government officials to advocate for adult education and family literacy. Question. What are two rights of everyone living in the United States? Question 10. The Literacy Information and Communication System, LINCS, is an online forum sponsored by OCTE to prepare for National Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. LINCS expanded its Learner Center to connect adults to resources to achieve their life goals. Question. What is one reason colonists came to America? Or a better way to ask this question is, what is one reason adults go to school? Thanks to the students and staff of Milpitas Adult School. Please visit us on the web at uscitizenpod.com. Thanks for listening. I know you will be a great American citizen. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.